The most important thing is to get it right. If you're delivering offers in real time to consumers on their smartphones, while they're engaged in a purchase transaction, while they're shopping, while they're considering you know, a, a major investment or, or a loan, uh, getting the offer wrong is bad it, because you're only an inch away, you're only a swipe away from your nearest competitor. So the first and most important thing is to get it right. Uh, and that obviously begs the question, well, how do you get it right? Banks are gonna need to be able to present the right offer at the right time and place uh, and at the right price using internal and external data to truly personalize the experience. Customers expect to be known by their bank and to get offers and pricing that truly reflect that relationship. A traditional take it or leave it approach isn't going to work in the digital economy. The way to, to get offers right in real time to an individual consumer is to develop a, a deep understanding of their preferences, their needs across channels, uh, across life stages and in the moment, right? that relevant in the moment contextual offer. For a lot of banks, this is going to be a revolutionary shift. They have traditionally managed their business through product silos. And what we're talking about here really cuts across those product silos. And it is going to force the banks to really pull up a level and provide a real relationship view for their customers that recognizes the totality of the relationship that that customer has with the bank and recognizes that relationship through the customer pricing and offer management. It's a big shift. Um, banks have traditionally uh, organized around product P&Ls um, and around infrastructure that has been built to support product P&Ls. Right? So the traditional bank has a mortgage operation, a deposits operation, uh, you know, payments, lending products, credit cards. Um, but the consumer really looks at this and says, well, I have a relationship with the bank um, and I'm engaged in a particular transaction, a particular purchase or a consideration. And therefore, I need the right offer and the right interaction with that bank, regardless of where that interaction comes from. So it's really about, about building that layer of uh, customer centricity on top of what has historically been a product silo and product centric view of the world. And that's a big shift for banks not just from an architectural perspective, you know, data analytics, but also from an organizational perspective. Well, the, the world as a whole is becoming more moment-centric. If you think about you know, consumers' interactions with the rest of the world, whether that's travel, media consumption, purchasing, uh, and you think about the, the services and providers you use, they all center around your smartphone, right? And most of those interactions are now driven through a real-time interaction. Um, and so consumers are conditioned to expect a relevant offer um, because that's what they're getting from Amazon, that's what they're getting from Google, that's what they're getting from Apple and a number of others. Consumers are already getting dynamic or living services from other big digital platforms. So they expect it in banking too, and they'll buy from a provider that can deliver it. Banks that offer more personalized deals at the right price in real time will be better able to compete, make higher margins and drive more volume. Over time, moment-centric banks will build both customer value and loyalty, and they're gonna be the winners in the market. It's a huge role. It's really the core uh, uh, engine that drives the intelligence behind what offers, what recommendations, what actions you put in front of customers. So the way we think of the world is there's three types of analytics. There is uh, descriptive analytics, which is about what happened and what is going on in your portfolio, what is going on in the market. That's the traditional world of BI tools, reports, um, what has happened in my market in the past. Uh, the second view of the world in terms of analytics is predictive analytics. So can I predict how a customer will react? That's the world of response models, behavioral models around utilization, uh, around product acceptance, around cross-sell, around retention. And so if I can predict customer behavior um, looking into the future, right, I can start making assumptions around or building strategies around what will happen uh, for, for, to a particular customer, a particular segment, um, if I make a particular offer. And then the third step is really around prescriptive analytics, and that's where optimization comes into play and to say, out of all the things I could do in this moment, given these customer characteristics, given all the data I can bring to bear to this question, what's the right choice, right? And that's a, a large scale, but real time optimization that needs to run to determine for the bank and the interaction with the customer. Analytics are critically important. 
uh, to provide these types of personalized offers. You need to have confidence as a bank that you're actually making the right decisions around the pricing and the offers that you make to customers. But it's not only about pricing and analytics. Figuring out the right thing to do is only part of the challenge. If you take someone like Starbucks, Starbucks cycles through hundreds of thousands of different personalized offers every quarter. They have to get those offers right, but critically, they also have the infrastructure to deliver those offers in real time to their clients through the Starbucks proprietary app. The first step is to identify the areas of biggest return. For example, moving average pricing on a mortgage book by just a few basis points can have a huge profit impact. It's also critical to view pricing and offer management as an enterprise level capability, just like risk management, and develop an overall roadmap to prioritize investments and share expertise. That is where an enterprise level solution like Nomus is important because it can scale with the bank's pricing and offer management maturity. Obviously, understanding the, the leverage points is important, and the leverage points are really across two dimensions. One is, where are my portfolios? Where are the dollars, right? So mortgage portfolio is big, deposits portfolios are big. Uh, if I can move the needle on these large portfolios, uh, even by a few basis points, that's tr tremendous payback and tremendous return on the investment. Um, so it's prioritizing based on where the dollars are and starting with the big opportunities. The second uh, uh, way of looking at the world is where are the leverage points in the interaction with the consumer? Is this about you know, smarter list pricing, um, i.e. pricing products that I put out to the market um, and changing my pricing across advertised pricing? Is this about smarter targeting and real-time offer generation uh, to very specific individual consumers? Or is the leverage point really in enabling the frontline banker to negotiate smarter? So we think of the world as you know, list-based pricing, customized pricing, and then uh, discretion management and negotiation. And depending on which product you're looking at and which portfolio and the particular sales process in a market, the leverage point may be different uh, across portfolios and across the interactions.